Oh England, when I first played European of Solace 4, I chose to play as this tea-loving nation. England has always been very powerful in most games, but little did I know at the time, England is not a good beginner nation in EU4. As I declared war in Scotland with no claim to a province, I got beaten up badly and France sailed over the English Channel to finish me off. This meant I lost all my northern provinces and maybe I should have picked the Ottomans. What I didn't realise at this time, however, is that I was playing with one of the worst rulers in game. Henry VI was King of England during this time, and he has some of the worst stats in game, since he is a 0 0 0. This can have a devastating impact on your country early game, with you not being able to upgrade in technology. Your armies, therefore, could be inferior to your rivals if you can't get military tech 4 in time. Not only this, but England also faces a civil war in E4, which is known as the War of the Roses. This is named after the emblem of the two sides, the Red Rose of Lancaster and the White Rose of York. In today's video, therefore, I want to give some historical background information to England, so you can understand why England is in this incredibly weak position, and why the King of England is seen as very incompetent in game. In fact, the only European monarch you could compare him to is the heir of Castile, Enrique. Also, we are trying to get to 75,000 subscribers by the end of the year, so if you like this sort of content, make sure to click that button. Right, let's get into the video. So, I firstly want to dive into what exactly happened to England before the start date of the EU4, and so we start by analysing the 14th century. England had a bitter rivalry with France, over a series of disputed territory. This goes back to the ancestors of the English monarch, since they are Normans, and therefore in some ways were vassals of France. The Hundred Year War was started by the French king of the time in 1337, when he confiscated the English herald Duchy of Guen. The English king at the time, Edward III, was outraged, and had a claim on the French throne himself. He therefore declared war upon France, it's important to note that Edward had defeated both Scotland and Wales, and was battle-hardened, despite the significant cost to waging war upon France and getting his troops onto the European mainland. Edward was incredibly successful and managed to defeat France multiple times. The most notable victory was at the Battle of Cressay. This shocked European leaders because a small but disciplined English force fighting on foot had overwhelmed the finest cavalry in Europe. England throughout the 14th century were always the underdogs. France was a much bigger country than England, and had a much bigger population. England, however, dominated France in the 14th century, despite the limited resources they had. In EU4, there is the 1356 mod that covers this period. You may find it more interesting than the typical EU4 start date of 1444. Fast forward to 1415, England decisively defeated France at the Battle of Agincourt, and the Hundred Year War could have ended here with the Treaty of Troyes that meant the English king at the time, Henry V, married the French king's daughter. The French king, Charles Amad, was simply not capable of defending himself against the English at the time. Despite the English victory, Henry V died in 1422, leading to his son, Henry VI, taking the English throne, and is the English starting ruler in EU4. I hope this gives you some sort of perspective of what Henry VI had walked into. England, although had done well militarily, they still had a large amount of problems. Perpetual warfare on the European continent drains a country significantly, and England certainly had economic hardship, with the Black Death and the Peasants' Revolt of 1381 not helping too much either. The early past of England's demise in France cannot be blamed on Henry, as he was only nine months old when he took the throne in 1422. The lack of an English central leader therefore led the powerful nobles of England surrounding the king and gaining a large amount of responsibility. Despite Henry VI also being the king of France, another claimant to the French throne, Charles, took the throne for himself with the support of the French nobles, and he used Salic law to justify his actions. Over the next few decades, France regained lost land and were defeating the English, particularly when Joan of Arc led the French to victory. In 1435, Burgundy also dissolved their alliance with England, 
leading to the English taking another blow. Perhaps, though, this disastrous war could have been stopped completely when Henry VI took the throne in 1437. What needs to be expressed, though, is that during this time, Henry needed to be a warrior king. Perhaps historians would judge him differently if he was born in a different era. But he had to be brave to command respect from his vassals and his enemies. Henry, however, abhorred the sight of blood and preferred to go praying in his church. This is probably the worst possible king you could have during this time. The French King Charles took advantage of this situation and got Henry to sign the Treaty of Tours in 1444. The treaty proposed Henry would marry Margaret of Anjou in return for Maine being ceded to France. This brings us to the start date of EU4, where England is very weak, and in some sense had no hope in holding onto its French land. Perhaps in EU4, when the surrender of Maine event occurs, it's clear why France almost always can take back its English cause. Therefore, England is quite difficult to play as. So what happens after the start date of EU4? The French king Charles VII began to take back his territories, leading to England losing more and more land over time. Eventually, England took a devastating blow at the Battle of Castillon. Henry, being well-intentioned and ruling with principles of Christianity, wanting only peace and stability, meant his enemies did not respect him, and the nobles grew tired of his timid personality allowing his wife to gain massive amounts of power. Eventually, in 1453, England lost almost all its French territories. As much as Henry was not a bad person, I personally believe the downfall of England and France could have been prevented, or at the very least extended, with a competent English king. After this time, Henry's mental health began to worsen, leaving him vulnerable and unable to deal with his enemies internally. His cousin, Richard Duke of York, believed Henry was incompetent. Richard then claimed the throne for himself, but when Henry awoke from his coma, the country was plunged into civil war. The Lancaster faction was led mainly by the Duke of Somerset and Margaret of Anjou. The civil war then became incredibly bloody and resource draining for both sides. Although Richard Duke of York was captured and executed, his son Edward became the head of York cause. This six foot three man eventually defeated Henry and became King of England in 1461. As time went on, Henry VI further declined and began running around in fields naked. He therefore became less able to lead his faction to victory. Although his faction managed to claim back the throne in 1470, with his wife Margaret playing a big part, he simply wasn't up to the task. Edward IV managed to get rid of a Lancastrian heir and then murdered Henry VI in the Tower of London in 1471. I hope this video gives you some sort of context as to what happened in England around the time of EU4, and why the English king is one of the most incompetent at the start date. Although in some ways it wasn't technically his fault, and he was seen as a good person, England would have been a lot better without him, and that is why he was a 0, -zero, -zero in game, not particularly helping his country in any shape or form, except maybe in education. What do you guys think of though? Should Henry VI be rated so poorly? Let me know in the comments.